Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Cohe, Technical Evangelist for Autodesk Manufacturing, and congratulations on receiving your 30-day free trial of Autodesk Inventor. Now, if you're anything like me, you want to fire up Inventor and you want to get to modeling straight away. And we're going to do that here in just a few minutes. But there's a couple things that I want to point out, some tips that will probably make the best use of your free 30-day trial. Now, the first thing that you're going to want to do, and that this is a trial, is go ahead and install all the elements of Autodesk Inventor during your installation process, and go ahead and accept all of the defaults. This will make sure that throughout the tutorials that I'm going to recommend you use and also throughout this video series that we're all on the same page, we're all on the same playing field. There's one slight thing that you'll, you'll probably want to modify during your installation process and that's your default unit of measurement. Now most of you, you in the U.S. are going to determine that inch uh, units of measurement are going to be your preferred uh, unit of measurement. Uh, those of you in the rest of the world are going to choose millimeter. So throughout all of the examples that I'm going to use and all of the tutorial examples that, you're going to, that I'm going to recommend that you use, um, most of the components that you'll be modeling are going to be in the metric format. Now I've installed my version of Inventor using inches as the default unit of measurement. And what that means is when you go to the, to the new file dialog box, which is the first thing that's going to be displayed when you fire up Inventor for the very first time, you're going to have multiple tabs across the top. You'll see default, English, metric. Your default is going to look back at your installation preference and say, okay, if you start a default part file, for example, um, your default unit of measurement is going to be inches. So just as a heads up, all of, the, uh, all of the components that I'm going to walk you through are going to be in metric. In order to access those, uh, I'm going to go to the metric tab before I start any new components. So that's really the only big heads up that I want to talk about. Um, as we go through modeling these components, um, I'll point out a few other things, but I really want to do them in the context of modeling your first part. Because like I said, if you're anything like me, you want to get modeling straight away. So let's go ahead and do that. So once I'm in the metric tab, as you can see, if I scroll down, I've got a whole lot of different file types. I've got DWG, I got IDW, I've got uh, IAM, uh, IPN, IPTs, well what are those? Well, they're, they're different file types that Autodesk Inventor uses to create both your part files, your assembly files, your drawings, and your exploded view presentations. And rather than go through uh, each one of them in depth uh, individually right at the outset, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on creating our first part file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fire up the standard millimeter IPT. And I'm going to use that as my default template. You may, AutoCAD users may be familiar with using DWT files, and those contain all your layers and uh, maybe some title blocks and some blocks that you use quite often. And we're using these uh, template files in a similar fashion. Each of these template files can be customized for your company's needs so that if you have a certain set of material properties, for example, that you want everybody to use, you would modify these part files and assembly files so that they contain all of your company standards and that every time somebody starts a new part, all of those standards follow through. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to fire up my first part file. Now in doing so, uh, Autodesk Inventor is going to immediately begin sketching for me. And it's, it's, a, it's a great option, but it's one of those things that you can control. Now, your desktop may, be, may look a little bit differently than mine uh, when you start your first part file. Let me show you what I've done. If I go into the Tools Application Options and go into the Sketch tab, on the Sketch tab, there's an option to change your display. And that display displays grid lines, minor grid lines, and axes. I've chosen to turn those off. Um, and I also recommend that you turn those off as well. And what you'll find is it's going to clean up your sketching environment a little bit so that we can focus on the bare basics of modeling our very first component here in, in Inventor. So I'll go ahead and close that and I'm going to go ahead and continue modeling up, sketching up rather, um, the first profile that I'm going to create a 3D solid from. And this happens to be um, my favorite part to model up um, when I'm showing Inventor for the first time to, uh, to anybody. It really shows a great deal of both sketching and real nice 3D modeling uh, techniques that I like to employ. So what you're going to see across the top, I'm going to refer to this as the ribbon bar. Now the ribbon bar is going to actually change based upon the environment that you're in. I've started a new sketch. And by starting that new sketch, Inventor is displaying the tools that I need 
to be able to sketch out 2D geometry. And those of you familiar with AutoCAD, you're going to be very comfortable in this environment. So as you start sketching along, if you take a look at the lower left-hand corner of the screen, I've called up the rectangle command. And those of you familiar with AutoCAD probably utilize the command prompt to have your, um, your inside voice communication with AutoCAD. Uh, don't do it out loud. People will talk and laugh. Um, but basically what it's telling me is go ahead and select the first corner of my rectangle, and that certainly seems to make sense. Now right in the middle of my screen here, you're going to see this, uh, this orange dot. And what that orange dot represents is my zero, zero. Now that's the origin of my part, and that's where all of my planes and axes uh, will converge. So if I look over here to my browser, which is on the left-hand side of the screen here, I'm going to escape out of my command so that I can expand the origin. What you're going to see is, is all the default work planes. You see all the default axes and, of course, the center point. That center point is going to be your origin. Now, I always try to model my components, especially the, uh, the first feature, which I, I call the base feature. Um, that base feature uh, it's really important that we have some sort of reference to the origin. That way we can take advantage of these origin planes rather than continually creating new work planes. Now I know I'm, I'm making reference to some things that we haven't talked about yet, but like I said, through this particular uh, heads up, uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things in the context uh, of doing them rather than kind of setting them all up uh, right at the outset. So let's go back to sketching a rectangle. I take a peek at the lower left hand corner of my screen and it's expecting me to select my first corner. Now as I pick that first corner, um, I take a peek at the, the lower left hand and it's saying select the opposite corner. Well, you AutoCAD users are probably used to this in that I can actually, inside the rectangle command in AutoCAD, I can determine the, the lengths uh, of that geometry while I'm in the context of the command. And with Autodesk Inventor, you can do much the same. You can see here on the screen that I'm being prompted for the width of this rectangle. Well, if I simply type in my desired width, which is one and a half millimeters, tab, hit the tab key to go to the next um, height parameter here, I'm going to go ahead and type in 13 and a half millimeters, tab out of that, and I'll hit enter to execute the command. Now, as you can see, what I've done there is not only did I create some geometry, but I also utilized what we like to call dynamic input while sketching. Now this is a very unique aspect of Autodesk Inventor. It allows you to not only create 2D geometry, but it also allows you to create and manage your parameters. Now parameters in a parametric modeler are the dimensions that control the geometry of through dimensions. So if I double click on this one and a half millimeter after escaping out of the command for uh, for a rectangle, if I double click on this one and a half millimeter and say change that to three millimeters, what you're going to see is it's actually changing the geometry. That's, that's what we refer to as parametrics, very basic parametrics. So let's go back to one and a half millimeters on that. 